planning to me. Order on my time to be able to Sure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for a beautiful day, Lord, and we're thankful for all the blessings that you've given each one of us, Lord. We ask that uh, as we meet tonight and some of the decisions that we need to make, that uh, you provide us wisdom and guidance as we make the best decisions for Rutherford County. I ask that you be with each one of the individuals that are represented here tonight and their families and the citizens who are watching at home. I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. First and up. Do the minute. Excuse me. Minutes to the last meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Been out of the saddle a little bit. Good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> evening, Commissioners. Hope you're all doing well tonight. Thank you. And just a couple of items for your consideration tonight. Well, first of all, our subdivision available uh, lot list for subdivision since January 2004. And we put it out on our table before the meeting. Uh, just a real quick overview. Uh, total available lots, we're down to about 978. Uh, that's down from 1167 this time last year. So again, most of what we're seeing is the existing subdivision, we're seeing more activity in those. We're not seeing just a whole lot of new subdivisions. We did have a new section of Sterling Ridge, about uh, 15 lots, I think, recorded this last month. That was the largest plot we had, but most of the activity we are seeing are in existing subdivisions. But that's the lowest I can remember that number in a long time. Yes, it, it's, yeah, I remember, you know, in kind of the height of everything, mm -hmm. it was uh, about 15, 1600, I remember. So we really have been seeing a, a, a continual decrease of that over the last couple of years. Are you seeing any? New subdivision come in. Uh, we're seeing a few here and there, just not like a huge rush of them or anything. Now, uh, actually, we got an email today, a new section of uh, Harrison Glen. They're looking to do one of those. So we're going to be meeting with the design engineer, Eric and myself, uh, next week on that. I'm not sure how many lots are there at this yeah. point. I think they're kind of in the preliminary stages right now. You would think over those lots coming down, there may be some more development coming up. Right, and I would expect that uh, as we start seeing this decrease more and more, you know, as the available lots go down, you're going to start seeing more new development that we haven't seen. Right. Around. Absolutely. And then you see the ones that are uh, on that last page there. They just are about 670 or so lots that are somewhere in the process. They're going to approve, maybe have plenty of approval, but no final plat yet. Maybe the final plat's been extended over time or something, you know, various situations, but that kind of gives you an idea. Those are still in process, but not recorded yet. If there's no questions on that. We'll go ahead and jump right into the... Hey, Joe. Yes, sir. Are we addressing anything on these, on the bond, on these roads, as far as when they're putting them in? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I'll let Mr. Hill speak to that. As far as... Uh, well, we currently... Most all, all of our bonds, we, we're watching them very closely now. We're, we're contacting developers and lending institutions 90 days at minimum in advance, letting them know. We're, we've also, I didn't feel comfortable with us waiting for the last day a bond expires to call it, so we backed that up a week and giving us time for, we were doing a lot of paperwork that was just nil at the end of the day. So we're, uh, we're, we're watching that very closely. So we're going to get more money up front now, I mean, Course. Yes, sir. With our new sub regs, that new system, the, the way the whole outlook is, we'll actually, the developer will provide to us, their engineer will give us a um, cost estimate of, of the development. So that will also go along with our calculated numbers to make sure we get the number right. And so that's that makes me feel better because, you know, we've always used a kind of a blanket number to calculate that cost, but we're also we're going to rely on their engineer to provide us some data also. So that way we don't, there, there's no... It'll make it hard for us to miss something. So, so we're really trying to beef up our bond. Appreciate you addressing that. Yes, I really do. All right, we just have uh, one rezoning application and then one text amendment to the zoning code uh, for this month for your consideration. The first, uh, the rezoning application is for a piece of property located at the intersection of Miller Road and Sledge Road. Uh, it's a piece of property, it's a total of about 37 acres. They're only asking for about uh, six and three quarter acres to be rezoned. Uh, they're asking, excuse me, for what's called Employment Activity Center zoning. This is within the identified node on a comprehensive plan as this being an employment area, which is why the zoning uh, reflects what they're asking for. Basically, what they'd like to do is rezone that portion to uh, use the property as a mulching yard. Uh, 
Uh, they have several bins of different types of mulch, gravel, those kind of things. Uh, eventually, they may have some sort of an office out there, although to begin, they'll probably just have, uh, if I don't have much of an office or anything, it'll probably just be a small parking area, not to, uh, to man the facility. That, that's really about it. Uh, the Planning Commission did consider that. Uh, ultimately, they did approve, recommend approval by a unanimous vote 10 4 0 against. The uh, concerned staff have has with it really it just deals with the access to the property. You can see from the concept plan and the agenda, uh, Miller Road is, is not the, the widest of roads, so we do anticipate that they'll have to do some kind of traffic improvement there just to allow better in, ingress and egress of the trucks from the property, which is primarily what this will be servicing. It'll be a wholesale facility, not a retail facility for anybody just to come and uh, pick up mulch or anything like that. Uh, so that's the uh, zoning application. The other issue that we have coming before you to next week is a text amendment to the zoning code regarding exterior storage and exterior display. Our current zoning code allows for exterior storage in certain circumstances, primarily in the heavier commercial zones, and it also has to be, you know, behind the building has to be screened, with the exception of, say, automobiles for car lots, you know, car sales, those kind of things. What the regulations really didn't anticipate when they were originally designed were those people that may want to sell uh, at Dutch barns outside, those kind of things. So after we spoke with a, uh, a, a property owner who had property that was zoned in such a way that wouldn't allow them to sell those kind of materials like Dutch barns or something like that, uh, we took it to the Planning Commission and asked them if they'd like us to possibly relax the code a little bit to allow for those kind of uh, situations. After getting a uh, basically a favorable nod from them. We came up with these regulations that you have uh, in your agenda materials tonight. Basically what we're going to do is rather than just have it as exterior storage, we're going to break it down to storage and an exterior display. Exterior storage will basically be unchanged, uh, except that we will open it up a little bit to say that uh, it's permitted only in the rear of the principal building unless they submit a site plan to us and we can look at it and it can be approved. You know, if it's screened properly and everything like that, we'll allow them a little bit more uh, leeway, especially if there's some lots. The, the one that, lot that really brought this up was a very irregular shape, very shallow, didn't have a whole lot of area behind the building that they could use. In addition to that, we added a section in there dealing with exterior display, which would allow uh, display of other things other than just vehicles. You know, if you look at the regulations, uh, one of the requirements says, you know, goods, materials, or other property offered for sale in an exterior display must be of such a nature that they're not typically located within a permanent building or structure such as vehicles, trailers, farming equipment, or landscaping supplies. Uh, we would not allow goods, merchandise, or products typically located within a permanent building to be sold outside, except for like a flea market, which that basically has that type of business. We also have some concerns about the display area, making sure that the surfaces that they're using uh, remain uh, in good repair and appropriate. So we've put a requirement in there also that compacted soil, gravel, or other asphalt or concrete surfaces could be used in that regard. Uh, we, the, the regulations span about three different pages in here, but that's just because we included that in commercial, industrial, and the special character areas, but the changes are the same. So Doug, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it, but I want to just make sure I'm clear. The, the deal that we talked about a while ago on the, the bar, on yes, the Upcom Shovel Highway, mm -hmm. As far as exterior display, that doesn't mean they can't be selling drinks outside. Okay. If, if that's kind of where you're going. With that that right. stage, you know. Everything. Well, the stage and, and that kind of thing. I think that's handled in a different section. This would not allow someone just to go outside and start having a, a stage for uh, exterior. Okay. When I'm talking about display, I'm talking display for sales, not necessarily outdoor display for a performance or something okay. like that's handled in a different part. Of okay, I, I, I thought that's what you were saying, but I want to make sure it's sure. clear. Absolutely. But again, that, that's just the two items we have before you tonight, and these were uh, recommended approved by the Planning Commission as well. Five minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the report as presented. Second. Motion made and second to approve. Anyone got any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all. Here. Aye. For you guys today, uh, budget transfer from uh, 499 other supplies and materials, uh, $2,500 to go to data processing equipment. This is to buy a uh, new PC computer for our new engineering inspector, which um, 
when we hired the end of the original intent, I think was this person's field expertise to maybe outweigh their office expertise. And we got lucky and got a really good candidate and employee that's really good with AutoCAD and some other things. And so we want to get this person a computer that will that'll allow them to use their tools and resources. Motion to approve the Second. Motion made and second. Can I have that coffee? All roll. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Building code. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners? September's permits issued was 188 permits total. Fees taken in was $125 for plan review. Building permits took in $40,001. Plumbing permits was $6,800. Gas permits $1,110 for a total of $48,036. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Oh, this month you said there was 95 building permits, 55 plumbing, and 38 mechanical, right? Um, am, I, am I looking at that right? Our mechanical is included in the building permit and is not separated out. Okay, what's the gas permit? Uh, gas lines, gas. Okay, so it's not, it's not the mechanical. Gas piping. Okay. It's not mechanical. Um, I've not got mechanical broken out. Um, it's included in the building. Okay. Plan, yeah. Well, I guess my question would be, on, on, we only have 55 plumbing and 95 building. Do they not do a plumbing inspection whenever they do a building? This is the number of permits issued. That's not inspections. I know, but if there were 95 building permits, wouldn't it be 95? Plumbing? Well, or, not, or not necessarily plumbing? in the same month. Okay. So, so in other words, we may have a builder come in and get 10 single family dwellings and then whoever runs the plumbing may we'll, come we'll in come later. That. Okay. So I mean, they could have been uh, coming up. They, they're not going to match the same month okay. if, they, if they don't come in at the, at the same time to rough in the plumbing or something. Okay. But yeah, it should work out to the point where we have the same numbers matching. Okay. For a plumbing permit for every single family to live. Okay. Yeah. On the back of the page, it gives our totals. Uh, for September, we issued 40 single family dwellings compared to last year's 41 in September. Uh, this year's total for single family is 450. Last year's um, totals for nine months was 400, so we're up 50 single-family dwellings from last year. Our total building permits issued is 1,899. Uh, last year's was 1,784, so we're up a total of 115 building permits. On the next page is your property maintenance inspections. We performed 237 property maintenance inspections on BZA cases and conditional uses. We did seven. <coughs> Signs was 75 for a total of 82 in that category. New cases for September was 43. Closed was 64. Our development tax collection was 246,750 for building codes, 51,000 for planning, for total taken in, $297,750. A cumulative total, fiscal year, $887,250. A breakdown below that uh, on the total was um, Smyrna was the highest collection 
jurisdiction for September with 183,750. <coughs> uh, there were some apartment buildings uh, that paid a development tax across the street from the Nissan factory uh, there on Nissan Boulevard. Yeah. We were trying to figure that out. Yeah, we just right there, which was from the plan, I think. Yeah. And that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve it. Second. Anybody got any questions? I got a go? statement I'd like to make. I want to thank you publicly for going out at 10 o'clock at night and oh. taking care of that situation on the uh, Shovel Highway, that bar. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate thank it. Okay, thank you. He was going to the bar anyway. <laughs> 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 this, was, this was a mess. <laughs> no, he didn't go out there by the time I called it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he took my call about 9.30 at night at home. <laughs> But I do appreciate it, and, and the people out there do as well. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'd just like to mention in the upcoming months, we're going to finalize some of our adoption papers for uh, the new building codes. We have to stay within seven years current of the state fire marshal's office and uh, commerce and insurance. And we have been working with the city of Murfreesboro, Smyrna, and Laverne. Um, we've worked some with Metro Davidson County. We've met with our marshal's representatives. Uh, we've met with the other jurisdictions in, in our county and other uh, cities as well across uh, the state of Tennessee to um, become as close as possible to our adoptions for these building codes um, across the state of Tennessee, you know, to make it uniform mm -hmm. as we can. So we're looking at adopting the 2012 uh, International Family of Codes, and uh, I'll bring that to you probably in December. And uh, everything's looking up right now. We've been meeting with the Home Builders Association and uh, spreading the news out for any questions and answers that we can get before we uh, finalize our adoptions. So uh, just wanted to let you know that's coming up. Can you highlight for us when you do that just the major changes? I, I don't, we don't want to know minutia, but the, the big stuff that people might fuss about. We, we will. We'll have some um, amendments probably to it to the point to where um, it's better for our area and our jurisdictions mm -hmm. in the state of Tennessee. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Ready for uh, solid waste and land people. Good evening. How are y'all? Good. good. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. 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 Before you, we'll start with the landfill report. Uh, the ver very first page shows the activity for the month. You can see the revenues down just a little bit. Uh, a lot of that's weather related. Uh, when you have a lot of rain, it just kind of slows down that activity. And then uh, the next page is two pages is where uh, our inspector came out and inspected the landfill. One page is for the active landfill, the other one is for the old boat site. That's the reason there's two. And next is the uh, quarterly update that we the TDAC, TDAC asked for that was sent out uh, actually on the 3rd, but it was about the information that happened through the end of September. And then uh, we're hauling leachate to the city of Murfreesboro wastewater treatment plant and they asked us to do another sampling on the leachate to make sure it's still like it was, and it is. Uh, it's a very mild leachate and doesn't require any pretreatment, anything like that. Uh, as of the end of the month, we think it's 220,000 gallons we hauled over there. And then we've gotten a lot of other stuff done at the landfill. The berms have been cre uh, breached through to create the, the proper drainage from the top of the landfill. All that's been seeded and strawed. Uh, the sediment pond uh, that we cleaned out, we actually dug it out a little bit deeper than what it really was and made it a little bit more, larger too. And we see it strawed all that. Uh, we've not had enough rain to actually make it drain. Uh, we dug it down to where it's below the outlet structure intentionally. And our intent there was once it fills up and it was enough sediment to the bottom of the outlet structure, it'd be time to paint it out. So we've got a little holding area that's just going to be for the sediment itself. Back, I got a question. It's been, and I haven't been on this committee in a while, but this is my first meeting back. But if, if we didn't have the city of Murfreesboro's um, land to go dump the leachate, 
would that be a cost to us by having to take it somewhere else? Yes. How much would that cost us? Uh, <coughs> one of the options that we talked about, Middle Point treats theirs and they have to treat theirs before they send it. Ours is mild enough, it does not have to be treated. Uh, but if we send ours next door to Middle Point, like we do with their other leachate, it costs them four cents a gallon to treat their own. And then if it's hauled off, I think it's 18 cents a gallon. Uh, the leachate that we're sending to the wastewater treatment plant is we're actually unloading in the same area that the porta potty people do. And it runs through that same system. Okay. And the main reason we're dumping there is if, if we have any sediment in it, there's a grinding pump to, to grind up their solids. So it would, would take care of our solids if we had any. We don't have any. But that was the intent for that. Okay. It mentioned in here, Mac, that we were discussing a long-term agreement. Is that going to have a cost attached to it, or are they pretty flexible on just letting us continue to use that without a cost? Right now, we're just continuing to use it without a cost. Okay. There, there's not a a long-term agreement yet okay we've got we still don't know how much leachate is still there well that's why i was just reading that july 2013 section i didn't know if anything had been discussed since then about an agreement or not on your report or from mr majors i think the one that he submitted on the third or that one yeah the one you submitted to mr majors i was just curious if there was an agreement yet or not no we, we've not gotten okay. to that point Take care of this one, or you're gonna move on to the meeting center. They do this and stuff. We'll do them either way. We'll just go on and do them. Anybody got any problem with us? Do them all together. Mm -hmm. Go ahead then. Okay. On the convenience center side, uh, of course, we'll be busy this week. It's spring break. Uh, fall break, spring break, we're always more busy. The only thing I can think of is Dad looks at him and says, yes, son, you have a pickup you can drive, clean out the garage, and take it off. <laughs> I don't know, but we wind up those break times is a little more busy. Uh, other than that, convenience center operation is running uh, about as well as it, it has in the past. We opened bids earlier uh, in the month of September for a new front loader truck awarded a bid. We should have that truck before Christmas. It was $216,000 right in that neighborhood. And then we also open bids for a trash compactor receiver box. The intent there is to add another trash compactor to the automobile convenience center. Uh, we've gotten with the fire department there. They're going to let us move the fence up closer to the building, take out our existing fence, take down the row of trees, put in another pad, another machine there. That'll probably be a late spring, early summer project once, once we get that installed. And then, uh, I guess it'd be a question after the report. Anybody have any questions on the convenience center side? We've got a meeting coming up to, toward the end of this month with uh, TWISDA, which is Tennessee Solid Waste Directors Association, and they asked me to do a presentation, which, which I will. Uh, it's about de debris management and how to track that stuff, uh, what they're asking for is how we did what we did during the Good Friday tornado. Uh, and during that event, we were extremely fortunate. Uh, we already had a contractor in place. The city of Murfreesboro had a contractor in place. The city and the county worked really well together. When the tornado hit that Good Friday, I got a call from the city's highway waste director said, we need you to open the landfill. Uh, called my guys, they went in, opened up. We didn't get a single load. The, traffic or the roads were so bad they couldn't get anything to us. So on Saturday and Sunday they brought us some loads. On the Thursday before Good Friday we had 37 trucks. The Monday after the Good Friday we had 750 trucks. So we got a rather busy. Uh, the city of Marsboro sent their contractor out. We had our contractor and then we had our retro people. So we had three dump faces going at one time. One for brush, one for uh, tree debris and lumber, and then one for the regular other stuff. Um, the way we tracked our information and charged and billed uh, through TEMA and FEMA, we got reimbursed for a lot of that. Uh, so that's the presentation that they're asking me to present to the other solid waste directors on how we tracked it and what we do. A lot of it we did on a daily basis anyway. Uh, and then the other thing that we're going to discuss, uh, which would come back to y'all if, if the solid waste directors approved it, would be an interlocal agreement through the solid waste departments for such emergencies to where there's already a predetermined number. It cost us roughly $75 an hour to operate a truck. 
So if everybody agrees that seventy-five dollars an hour is a fair number, we can put that have that contract in place. Or if something like this comes up and we need to call one of our neighboring counties to come and assist us, they can. The charge is already there. You know, so that's the discussion that we're going to have toward the end of the month, and, and I think it's going to be favorable. Similar to the same thing the fire departments do. Well, I think Tima right now is actually putting together plans for such things as that. As far as that, strike teams in case of you know, rescue and things like that now. So that they're going through that process. So you, you're ahead of the game by getting that done. So. I see the, when the tornado hit over in Hickman County, Coble, Tennessee, we sent two trucks and two drivers over there for a day to help them. Uh, of course, it wasn't declared. We didn't get reimbursed for it, but yeah. we, we helped them. Is, is that is that $75 you're talking about, is that equivalent to what FEMA, uh, FEMA's got a, a pay grade or whatever that they, that they give for like fire engines or for uh, um, fast has, trucks or whatever. FEMA has a, 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 a whole list of things. Right. Different size trucks have a different value to them. Uh, so you can either go off by that list or if you have a, a pre-existing agreement, they will pay what your agreement price is. Okay. Yeah. But if, if everything goes well and I present it good enough, I guess we'll next month have a resolution coming to you for for an agreement possibility for several counties probably. <clears throat> you might have any more questions, Max? Not we need a motion on the report. Motion to approve it. Motion and second. Anybody got any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 For all those teachers out there watching, uh, Recycle Rutherford still, still has their phone book drive going. Uh, October the 28th, I believe, is when they're going to have the drawing to see who won that. So if they have phone books, they need to turn them in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is a highway department report. You got a, uh, two items here from the uh, road board. And uh, the first one is uh, the sheriff's department uh, is recommending on Puckett Road 40 mile per hour speed limit. That motion was made, it's passed at the road board, so we need to do that one first. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is uh, on the uh, Road superintendent uh, the state sets their salaries what it is to be and uh, there's the figures for the road superintendent salary for uh, 2013 2014 so uh, that motion was made in second to approve a new salary for the road superintendent. Do you know, was he paid appropriately last year? Did this increase just happen? And that's why it didn't I, get... I think, I think it was uh, around 116. But I'm saying, was he paid appropriately prior to this budget cycle? Well... I uh, think we can look at that memo. Okay. Yeah. Look at that right there. Right. I mean, I, know, I understand where it's saying that it will, that it's not correct for the 2013-14 budget. My question is, he took office before that, so before we adopted this budget, was he being paid the right amount? He then? was being paid uh, what they was what they said at that time. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion we approve. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions? This is all in, in their own, in y'all's own budget, right? Yeah. Will the state pay some of it? It's all in the highway department's funds, just like the rest of it. 
All in favor? That's roll call. Roll call. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Dernigan? Yes. Anyone got any other business that need to bring forward? No, we would adjourn now. Thank you. Thank you.